Doesn't cascadón mean like the rattle of the rattlesnake? Yes. Maybe Josh can like put up a rattlesnake right next to this. Welcome to another episode of Sweet Heat. Today you are in for a treat. I am going to make you a recipe that I've been sitting on for, God, probably like three years. This recipe I really, really like. I wanted to put it in mi cocina, my cookbook, but I just didn't have room. So I'm gonna make it for you today. It is a very simple coconut spicy roasted fish. It's really easy. You basically mix a bunch of really delicious spices with some citrus and coconut milk. Put this beautiful hunk of fish in the oven for about 20, 30 minutes until it's just flaking and falling apart. While it's cooking, we're gonna make a salsa matcha. It is an oil-based salsa. It's really incredibly delicious. And I'm gonna actually add some anchovies for an additional layer of fishy flavor. You are going to love it. I'm like, I wish we could use Copacabana. Josh, can we use Copacabana? At the Copa, Copacabana. The hottest spot north of Havana. Here at the Copa, I fell in love. Okay, so what we're gonna do is get everything prepped for the fish. So the first thing I'm gonna do is open up my coconut milk. You want full fat or, well, I want full fat. If you wanna use low fat, you do you but the fish is pretty lean. Um, and so I feel like it, it needs full fat, but then what doesn't need full fat, honestly? So we're just gonna dump this into our 13 by nine baking sheet. You can use glass or metal. I couldn't find my glass 13 by nine when I went home to yesterday. So we're using the metal because that's what I found. And now I'm using citrus. So it's citrus season. So we've got to be using some delicious citrus. Plus I just love this, especially if you're making this in the winter time and it's really cold out and bleak, this is going to lift your spirits and pick you up. It's going to take you to the beach where it's warm and tropical. The breezes are blowing. And so I'm just taking the zest off. I have a little trick for how to take zest off with very little pith. Sebas, if you please. So take a, just a normal Y vegetable peeler, and then, then just start at the top and gently apply pressure and then slide the blade back and forth. And then just ever so gently move down. And then, you get very, very little pith on the zest. So all of the flavor, none of the bitterness. Now I'm gonna be using allspice. I love allspice. So years ago, I had gone to visit a coffee farm in Veracruz, which is a, a state uh, on the Gulf Coast. And we were up in the mountains and they were harvesting allspice um, at the top of the mountain. And my hotel room was at the bottom of the mountain and the wind was blowing down from the top into my room. And I woke up and I thought, oh my God, somebody's smoking clove cigarettes. And actually it was the smell of the allspice coming down from the trees in the mountains. And allspice is so incredible. And I also love that it's grown here in Mexico. So I'm just gonna throw that in. And now I'm going to add a little bit of salt. I'm using sea salt. You can use kosher or sea, whatever your desire. This is sea salt from another state in Mexico. This is from Colima, which I find has some of the best sea salt in the country. And I really love it. Now I'm going to just place this over the top. I had originally thought and developed this recipe using cod or halibut, uh, which is obviously a lot easier to find in the US. It is impossible to find it here. Uh, in Mazatlan, the only fish that exists are fish that you can, that actually comes out of the Pacific Ocean in this area. So I'm actually using a cason, which is a thicker fish. What you want is A, something that you like, but because we're roasting it, you want something that's thicker that can take higher heat for a longer period of time. Now we are going to 
season this with salt. It's about two pounds, which means that I'm gonna need two teaspoons of salt. That is about two tablespoons of olive oil. And now this dish is ready for the oven. I preheated the oven to 325 degrees and the fish is going to roast for between 15, 20, 25 minutes, depending on the size and the thickness of your fish. The test is just to make sure that it's cooked all the way through and it easily flakes apart. While the fish is cooking, we're gonna work on the salsa matcha. First thing we're gonna do is toast the nuts and garlic in oil. I'm going to cook this over medium heat. What I really wanna do is get this really deep caramelly color on the garlic. You'll see little bubbles in about six minutes. Once the garlic is golden brown and the nuts are golden, that means it's done. And then I'll work on the chilies. See how soft. They are, they're not breaking. Oh, they smell so good. They feel like dried fruits. This is what you want to see when you buy dried chiles. Yes, they're dry, but they should be soft and pliable. They should smell like dried fruit. They should have flavor, they should have sugar. If you buy them and they're hard and then brittle, they're probably gonna taste like dust. Don't buy them, go to another store. So these are all ready to get toasted in a hot oil bath. Salsa matcha is a really great complement to leaner things like fish or turkey or roasted vegetables. And it's super easy. You can swap out a lot of these ingredients. In fact, last year on our Thanksgiving episode, I actually made a cranberry salsa matcha with walnuts. It was incredibly delicious and kind of celebrated traditional American uh, Thanksgiving-y flavors. This one, we're playing up the, the coast because we're obviously making a coconut roasted fish. So I'm adding in the anchovies, but you can just have fun with it. Use whatever you have in your pantry. It's super easy. These chiles smell so good. We've caramelized all those natural sugars. They're nice and toasty and kind of crispy. And so now the oil is off the heat and I'm gonna add the sesames. And these are just going to toast up while we wait for the food processor. So for all you people out there that don't like anchovies, this is like Caesar dressing, right? So you make Caesar dressing, if you leave the anchovies out, it's not gonna taste like Caesar dressing. It's gonna be flat and boring. There is a fine line where, where if you add too many anchovies, it starts to taste like anchovies, right? And if you don't like the taste of anchovies, then you're gonna have an issue. But a few anchovies in any kind of a sauce, sauce salsa, Salsa matcha is going to add so much umami, so much flavor, so much delicious seasoning. You're never gonna know it's there and it's going to make whatever you're eating even more incredible. So we are going to add four anchovies. Yum. And now everything that we fried, so this is all gonna go in. And you do want them to get toasty because that's just gonna add to that really, really delicious salsa matcha flavor. So when you pull it out of the oven, the way that you want to check and see if it's done, well, there are a couple of different ways. So one thing you can do is take a knife or a cake tester, stick it into the thickest part of the fish, and then hold it up to your lip. If it feels really warm, but not burning you, that means it's done. The other way, which I actually like a little bit better, is to see if the meat is actually just like coming apart. If it's easily flaked apart, then that means it's completely done.
So in my original recipe, I had actually just used this fish as like a main dish, uh, served with roasted vegetables and maybe rice. But in this version, we're gonna make tacos because who doesn't love a good fish taco? So I've got my tortillas. And then I'm just gonna use a spoon and break this fish apart and just kind of like shred it up a little bit, but then let it soak up all that beautiful coconut. And now a little bit of orange, a little bit of parsley for color, a little bit of cilantro for flavor, and then the flavor bomb. Oh, look at that, look, look, oh my God. And that is a roasted coconut fish taco with anchovy salsa matcha. Oh, I'm so excited. Also, we did taqueria style double tortillas because it's really wet and drippy as you can see. It is so incredible. It's, it's definitely very tropical. This is a very West Coast Mexican dish. It is the perfect, very, very different fish taco. You are going to absolutely love it. And don't forget, if you love this taco, then you need to go buy my book because there are lots of other recipes just like this one in my book. Also check out the Mi Cocina video series You'll learn how to make white moles and tamales and the most ridiculous torta ever in the universe. And as always, if you like me, if you like this recipe, make sure you hit like and subscribe and you will be notified as soon as there's another Sweet Heat episode.